Looking to up your investment game? How about taking a few lessons from one of the most successful investors of all time? That should do it, right? Well, today we'll be looking at no other than the man himself, Warren Buffett, undeniably one of the best investors of our lifetime and one of the richest men alive. But Buffett is no trust fund baby, oh no. The chairman and CEO of Berkshire Hathaway climbed his way to the top of Forbes' richest people list all by himself. But what's the recipe for his secret sauce? As he has shared before, Buffett's secret sauce is made up of six investment principles that we are going to share with you here today. Let's get into it. Rule number one, never lose money. Seems simple enough, right? Now, obviously, rule number one doesn't mean you can't experience loss. After all, it's bound to happen, even to Warren Buffett. Actually, he has lost more money than most of us could ever dream of having. During the financial crisis of 2008, Buffett had losses of nearly $23 billion, costing him his company's AAA credit rating. A little hypocritical from good old Warren to ask us not to lose money when he has lost this much, don't you think? How can he tell us to never lose money? While he's probably not referring to an actual loss of capital, instead, he's referring to the mindset investors must endure when it comes to capital losses. Don't rush into things. Don't gamble your money and always do your research. Something we like to remind our audience about often here at The Stock Dory. Rule number two, never forget rule number one. No, seriously, never without a doubt forget rule number one. Rule number three, invest in what you understand. In Buffett's own words, I get in enough trouble with things I know something about. Why in the world should I take a long or short position in something I don't know anything about? If you invest in something you don't understand, you could be making poor decisions along the way. Always evaluate the company first and determine whether the investment is right for your portfolio. If you fully understand what a company seeks to accomplish, you have a better chance of achieving what your investment is set out to do. Or, on the other hand, decide not to take the investment and dodge a bullet. Which takes us to Warren's next golden rule. Rule number four, never invest on borrowed money. Warren Buffett has been quoted on CNBC saying, it's insane to risk what you have and need for something you don't really need. And boy, ain't that right. Using leverage can leverage you into bankruptcy really freaking quick. Warren explains this in this video. If you take unleveraged returns against unleveraged common stocks, uh, I do not think what is being purchased today and marketed today would work well. But if, if you can borrow money, you can buy assets that will yield 7 or 8% and you can borrow enough money at four or five percent and you don't have any covenants to meet, you're going to have some bankruptcies, but you're going to also uh, have better results in many cases. It's not, a, it's not something that interests us at all. We, we are not going to leverage up Berkshire. If we'd leveraged up Berkshire, we'd have made a whole lot more money, obviously, over the years. But uh, both Charlie and I probably have seen some more high IQ people, really extraordinarily high IQ people destroyed by leverage. We saw long-term capital management where we had people who could do in their sleep math that we couldn't do, or at least I couldn't do, you know, working full-time at it during the day. And I mean, really, really smart people working with their own money and with years and years of experience of what they were doing. And, and uh, you know, it all turned to pumpkins and mice in 1998. Leverage can wipe you out, it's risky, and it's also expensive. Those interest rates can easily eat at your gains, not to mention the nerve-wracking feeling of seeing a borrowed money investment turn red. Ouch, no thanks. Seriously, even if you see a stock doing well, avoid buying it if you don't have the funds on hand. Always think it through first. Patience is key to ranking in the stock market winning team. We're now leaning into the second half of Warren Buffett's rules. But stay with us, because what's left is just as important as the rest. Rule number five, be fearful when others are greedy and be greedy when others are fearful. If you have a temperament that when others are fearful, you're gonna get scared yourself. 
you know, you are not going to make a lot of money in securities over time, in all probability. And that, uh, uh, you know, people really, if they didn't look at quotations, but of course the whole world is urging them to look at quotations, and more than that, do something based on small changes in quotations. But if you didn't think how much more rational, we've talked about it before, but think how much more rational investing in a farm is than the way many people buy stocks. I mean, they, if you buy a farm, do you get a quote next week? Do you get a quote next month? If you buy an apartment house, do you get a quote next week or month? No, you look at the apartment house or the farm and you say, I expected it to produce so many bushels of soybeans and corn, and if it does that, it meets my expectations. But they buy a stock and they think if it goes up, it's wonderful, and if it goes down, it's bad. We think just the opposite. When it goes down, we love it because we'll buy more, and if it goes up, we, it kills us to buy more. Um, and I, you know, all you know, Ben Graham wrote about it. It's been explained. Uh, but if you can't get yourself in that mental attitude, you're going to be scared whenever everybody else is scared. And, and to expect somebody else to tell you when to buy and therefore get your courage back up or something, you know, I could get this fellow's courage up substantially by saying it's a wonderful time to buy. And then a week from now, he'd run into somebody else that tells him the world is coming to an end. And he'd, he'd sell. I mean, he's a broker's friend. This is another famous Warren Buffett quote on investing. In short, it means don't follow the herd, especially when it comes to making well-informed investment decisions. In other words, be a contrarian. Your experience is your own best friend. Don't let the fears of a red market candle scare you out of what could be a good opportunity. Market downturns tend to be the best opportunities to buy at discounted rates. Of course, the strategy comes with risk, as do all great investments. Others may have different preferences, goals, and strategies, and one is never the same. The same goes for periods of extreme greed in the market. If everyone is thinking a stock will keep going up forever, it could end up doing quite the opposite. Ultimately, go with your gut, follow your rules, and your own strategy. Now, the last rule on our list today is to hold for the long term. After all, Buffett's favorite holding period is forever. It's not our natural inclination to sell. And on the other hand, uh, and, and we have held the Washington Post stock since 1973. Uh, I've never sold a share of Berkshire, having bought the first shares in 1962. Um, and we've held Coke stock since 1988. We've held Gillette stock since 1989, held American Express stock since uh, 1991 um, we had actually previously been an american express one in, in the 60s in disney so there there are companies we're familiar with we generally sell well, well we would sell if we needed money for something else but that has not been the problem in the last 10 or 15 years that 40 years ago my sales were all because I found something that I liked even better. I hated to sell what I sold, but I, but I also didn't want to borrow money. So I uh, would reluctantly sell something that I thought was terribly cheap to buy something that was even cheaper. Uh, that those were the times when I had more ideas than money. Now I've got more money than ideas. And that's a different equation. So now we sell really when we think that we've when we're reevaluating the the economic characteristics of the business, in other words, if you take them, don't want to name names, but take 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 a stock we've sold of some sort, we probably had one view of the long-term competitive advantage of the company at the time we bought it, and we may have modified that. That doesn't mean we think that the company is going into some disastrous period or anything remotely like that. We think McDonald's has a fine future. We think Disney has a fine future, and there are others. But we probably don't think that their competitive advantage uh, is as strong as we might have thought, as we thought it was when we initially made the decision. That may mean that we were wrong when we made the decision originally. It may mean that we're wrong now and that, and that their strengths are every bit as uh, what they were before. He's well known for researching and finding some great companies and then holding onto them for long periods of time. Berkshire Hathaway has had its hands on Coca-Cola for over 30 years. Some other stocks Warren Buffett has held for the long term include Wells Fargo, American Express, 
M&T Bank, Moody's, Osco Wholesale, Globe Life, Johnson & Johnson, and even UPS. That's not even the end of the list, but you get where we're going. This strategy has worked well for him, so why wouldn't he advise others not to do the same? He has also been caught saying, if you aren't willing to own a stock for 10 years, don't even think about owning it for 10 minutes. For some of us, that may sound crazy, but is it really that unrealistic to consider? Because it's not a saying you should just sweep under the rug. If anything, let it settle for a bit and reconsider. Now, those were the top six rules of Warren Buffett's investing strategy we believe could help you, but there's much more where that comes from. As always, let us know in the comments what you thought, and we'll be sure to check them out. Like, comment, subscribe, and we'll see you next time.